So in the last video, we were doing pretty good. We went through a couple of different definitions. And the first one we started with was toxicology, which led into the concept of toxicity, which led into the concept of something being toxic, and then the definition of a toxicant. And we said a natural version could be, or a man-made version could be in existence. Neither one of these are more toxic than the other. If they're toxic, they're toxic. That's just the way that it is. And then we talked about this word called toxin, T-O-X-I-N, that specifically comes from a plant, an animal, a fungi, or a bacterium. So those are a couple of different definitions that we need to keep in mind as we progress through this lecture module. All right? Okay, so now let's talk about some of this uh, toxic environment or toxic chemical that you might expose yourself to. So whether a chemical is toxic or not really depends on the dose, all right? So keep in mind in the last video, we said that water could be toxic. And you're probably scratching your head thinking, well, how could that really be true? Because we drink it every day and our body needs it. They actually tell us if we don't drink water, we're going to dehydrate and die. Well, dose is going to be very important. The dose rate is also going to be very important. Okay, so the dose is specifically how much. And we also have this thing called a dose rate. And a dose rate is how long. Because remember, the word rate, it kind of makes you think of the word speed, right? How fast or how slow. So it's how much and how long or maybe you are exposing yourself to it. That would be called a dose rate. And at a certain point, there's going to be basically a threshold. A threshold is basically the point at which the toxic effects are beginning, just beginning, to be seen or observed. Okay, so with that said, here's my person. Here's going to be my stick figure. And we have a bottle of questionable stuff that we would like this person to take. All right, so I let them eat it or drink it or expose themselves to it in some kind of fashion. And maybe with that small amount of dose... In that short amount of time frame, I allow a couple of nurses or doctors to monitor their health status, and nothing's found. That means that this chemical is probably not toxic at that certain dose. All right, so the next time we bring this person in, we'll give them a little bit more. Then we'll give them a little bit more. Then we give them a little bit more. And maybe that second round, we didn't see anything. The third round, we didn't see anything. But maybe the fourth round, we did. Some kind of side effect was going on, and we were able to pick that up. So let's say that this was maybe a milligram. This was two milligram dose, a three milligram dose, and then a four milligram dose. The four milligram dose would be dose is what we would call the threshold. It is the point at which the toxic effects are beginning to be observed. All right. So all of this kind of leads us into what we would call a clinical trial. And that's a clinical trial with a company, a pharmaceutical company. They have to test their drugs on eventually humans before it gets mass released to the public. And these are the certain things that they would be reporting on. These are a couple of things that they would be confirming. And threshold is one of those terms that show up very often. Now, a couple of things that we have to say about toxicity. There's going to be two forms 
One is going to be called acute, and the other one is going to be called chronic. All right, so number one and number two. Acute toxicity is systemic damage. That means pretty important, okay? With a single dose or single exposure. Now, this could be minutes. It could be seconds. It could be hours. Or it could be days. But the idea and the concept here is that it is very brief. You walk into a lab. You expose yourself to this reagent. It is toxic. And you will feel the side effects immediately. And the word immediately could go up to a couple of days. When you see maybe shortness of breath, some type of rash, some type of allergic reaction, who knows? But those side effects are going to be very dominant very quick. Chronic is a little different. With chronic, you're actually exposing yourself to smaller doses. That's all that's required over a period of time. And time could be months to years. The problem with chronic is that your body can accumulate poison and toxins and never get rid of them. It can obtain the smaller doses and as you expose yourself to that daily, every day you go into work, you're there at nine o'clock each morning, you're exposing yourself to that same chemical over and over and over and over and over and your body is probably gaining in concentration of that chemical as the days go on. And if that chemical gets stored in your body, and your body cannot release it, easily at least, then you can get to that threshold. That's what this is all about. So acute toxicity means that you're getting to the threshold quickly. One exposure, that's all you need. If it's high enough, you get to the threshold and you get those side effects almost instantaneous. The chronic version, though, smaller doses so you think they're okay. You expose yourself over time, little bit by little bit by little bit. What's happening with chronic is that you might start low, but over a course of time, you are gaining that concentration, which means you're gaining your exposure, and sooner or later, you're going to get to the threshold of that chemical. It's going to take some time, but you're going to get there. Now, here's the misconception that a lot of people have. Acute toxic effects have nothing nothing to do with chronic toxic effects meaning they could be related if they are related then that's just by circumstance right you got lucky acute toxic effects do not give you an idea or a predictor of what the chronic side effects might be you have to treat them separately. All right? So, for instance, acute toxic effects, maybe this will give you shortness of breath. You'll know it immediately after you inhale that chemical that you were using. So you start to breathe a little heavier, right? The chronic toxic effects, though, could be kidney damage. It has nothing to do with breathing. It has nothing to do with your lungs. Or it could be liver damage. Or it could be some type of cancer. But it has nothing to do with the shortness of breath, which is the side effect that you saw on the acute side. Chronics can be completely different. 
and they do not have to be related. And that is a misconception that many people have. They think, hey, if I've got an acute of shortness of breath, then maybe the chronic toxic effects would target the lungs and maybe long-term exposure would damage the lungs. Not necessarily. It could happen, yes, but not necessarily. So this is the concept of acute and this is the to concept of to chronic toxic side effects. Now, working in a laboratory, again, there's two different versions. We have acute and we have chronic. Working in a laboratory, you typically will not experience chronic side effects. And the reason is because in a lab, you are working with very small amounts, for starters. You are working with different substances every day, and you're never really doing the same test over and over and over. There might be some that you do commonly that you will probably do enough that you'll memorize how to do that recipe. You probably won't even need to follow the directions. But there's going to be a point in time where the lab environment is creating scenarios for acute adverse effects. So if you're going to work with stuff, and if it's going to be toxic, you're going to probably not use it every day. You're going to be using it in very small amounts. And if you're going to get a side effect from it, it's going to happen immediately. After that, maybe the next day you'll never see it. Maybe the next week you'll never see it again. Maybe the next month you'll never see it again until it's brought back out onto the lab shelf for you to use and do the test on one more time. Chronic side effects are typically the manufacturing side. So if I'm working for a company, let's say a pharmaceutical company, and I'm mass producing some type of compound, and I'm using reagents in that mass production, then those reagents will lead to chronic side effects because these are going to be very large amounts. And it is kind of on repeat here. We're doing the same thing every day, 40 hours a week, all year long. You're exposing yourself to that substance that could be a toxic substance. And maybe your body is absorbing that chemical and storing it over a course of time. And you could get these chronic side effects for that reason. So as a laboratory worker... What I'm telling you is that if you're going to experience anything at all, you're going to be experiencing the acute. If you are not hired for a laboratory, but you're on the manufacturing side and you're making the product, then you probably will be more prone to the chronic side effects over the acute ones. However, these two things have nothing in common. Acute side effects could be completely different than what you would think the chronic side effects would be. All right, so with that said, I'm stopping the video here. In the next video, we'll talk about how your body begins to handle these toxic compounds. Remember, I said everything is toxic. Everything is toxic up to a certain dose. The dose is important. So how does your body take care of it? That's what we'll talk about in the next video.